Hey guys, it's Danny, and we just wrapped up another Friday Facebook Live, and today I made a shredded Brussels sprout and kale salad with Pecorino Romano cheese and bacon. So I wanted to pop over, share it here with you guys. This would be an amazing salad for Thanksgiving, or really for any day of the week, but it really is beautiful and super special, so it's great for the holidays. So make sure you check it out and come down to the comments below and let me know what you think. I'll see you soon. And we're live. Hello, hello, my friends. It's Danny coming at you live, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time from New Jersey. I am showing you guys today the salad that I have been most recently obsessed with. I have not shared this before. It's not on my website, um, although I'm gonna post it soon. But this is the salad I plan to bring along for Thanksgiving as a side dish. Um, and I'm very excited to eat it for lunch today as well. So I am making a shredded kale and Brussels sprout salad with some crispy bacon and a little Pecorino Romano cheese over the top. So guys, I'm super excited to share this one with you. It is so delicious and I love salads like this because it really goes to show you that salads do not need to be boring. You can really make a salad into a complete showstopper. Okay guys, so as you're joining in, come on down to the comments below. Let me know who's watching. Let me know where you're watching from and I am going to pull up my Facebook right now so I can see those comments as they come in. How many of you guys are cooking for Thanksgiving? I am curious. We, I personally am not cooking this year. I go to my sister-in-law's house who makes an amazing Thanksgiving dinner, um, but I'm gonna bring a couple side dishes along. So let's see. Okay, I got it. We are here. Okay, so whoops, let me turn the volume down. We have people starting to tune in. We have Shelly um, from Sacramento. I know, Shelly, I'm so behind on the Thanksgiving inspiration, but I'm also gonna send um, a newsletter out this weekend with some of my favorite Thanksgiving sides and even some of the turkey recipes. Although I don't have one on my website for a whole turkey, I'm gonna show you guys ones that I have used in the past that I think um, are you know great go-to uh, techniques to use to do a no-fail turkey. Okay, we have Julie from Chicago. Hey, Danny, Jen, hello. To um, oh, she, Tammy loved the opal, the apple oat muffins. Okay, guys, awesome. Hi, Sapria. As you guys are tuning in, keep coming down to the comments. Let me know who's watching, where you're watching from, and please let me know if you are cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Like, do you host? Are you in charge of the main show? Or are you bringing a side or a dessert? And if so, what's it gonna be, okay? Come on down to the comments below, let's hear it. So guys, I'm gonna be making this beautiful shredded kale and Brussels sprout salad. I'm going to start with, oops, I hear myself. I'm going to turn the volume down. Should I make the dressing first or the salad first? Big decisions in my life. Okay. What are you doing first? I'm going to make the dressing first. Okay, so if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know that one of my absolute favorite kitchen tools are these little spouted glass cups with the measurements on the sides. These are the perfect tool for making salad dressings because you have all the information you need right here um, if you're not someone who eyeballs it. Because I like to do my vinaigrettes 50-50, right? So traditionally a vinaigrette is three to one, three parts oil to one part vinegar or acid, or citrus. For me, I like to do one-to-one. -one. And it's not just because it's lighter, it is lighter, but I prefer the flavor. It's a little tart, it's a little more bright. So we're gonna start with a quarter cup of olive oil in the bottom. This is gonna make about a half a cup of dressing. That's about a quarter cup. And that's an extra virgin olive oil. That's when you guys, that's what you wanna use your good olive oil for, right? You buy those cold pressed, cold um, extra virgin olive oils, really raw, grassy flavor, and don't cook with them. Save them to do beautiful dressings like this, okay? Then we're gonna add, um, the same amount, so another quarter cup of fresh lemon juice, okay? And it's about one lemon usually, but it's gonna depend on how juicy your lemon is. Another favorite kitchen tool is this little orange squeezer. And you'll notice at the store, guys, they sell, um, they sell one for lemons, limes, and oranges. Just get the one for the oranges, because it's the biggest, and you can do your lemons and limes in there too. If you get the smallest one, which is the lime one, then all you can do is limes. Okay, does that look like we're half and half? I can't see from my angle. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, so we're about 50-50 there. Okay, then, um, let's see. I'm gonna just check in real quick. I see some comments coming in. Julie says, I'm making turkey potatoes. Not sure if it's mashed or roasted. 
green bean casserole, quinoa stuffing, and cranberry syrup. Oh, you're doing the whole nine. Dark chocolate chip. We have a quinoa. Remember our quinoa stuff? She's using yours. That's oh, yeah. what she said. She said it was a big hit last year. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Okay, guys. So then to my dressing. And I have to say, when it comes to salad dressings, I just, I love this basic vinaigrette. I do tend to use it over and over, and I just change it by changing the type of acid I use, meaning maybe I'll use red wine vinegar, maybe I'll use balsamic vinegar, today I'm using lemon juice, but those little changes do change the flavor, but it's the same base formula. Okay, so two cloves of garlic, easiest way to get your garlic out, knife over the top, little smash, okay? Garlic number one. And then we'll do it one more time. I should have put a garbage bowl out here. Garlic number two. Grab them. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Okay. And then I'm getting a garbage bowl, guys. This is actually the Rachel Ray garbage bowl. And she's the one who like introduced me to that concept many moons ago. You keep, if you're gonna do a lot of cooking, you just leave it on the counter so you don't have to go back and forth to the garbage. And you don't have to make a mess on your counter. Okay. So that's that. Jennifer is here. She said she almost missed it. Hello, Jennifer. So happy that you made it. That's awesome. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So you can fine chop your garlic, but I personally love myself a garlic press. It gets it really, really tiny, and it almost like juices the garlic, which in my opinion adds so much flavor to whatever it is you're making. So you get the garlic nice and fine. Then you go. Then we have one more, so two cloves of garlic. And when I used to live in California, guys, I went to a culinary school called the New School of Cooking. So it was a culinary school for the home cooks. So um, one thing I learned there that I, I use this technique and tip all the time, which is when you're making your salad dressing, that you wanna add a lot of big flavors because this little bit of dressing is what you're gonna to use to season all of the salad because we don't usually season the salad, right? It's just the veggies and whatever we're sprinkling in. So when you're salting and putting the pepper and the, um, the garlic in your salad dressing, you wanna go big with the flavor because that's gotta translate over everything that you're making in your salad. Okay, then we're going to be doing a little fine diced red pepper here, guys. Hand red. flat over the top. Red onion. I'm sorry, thank you, red onion. And then you come back over and the finer you want the dice, just the smaller you make this little crisscross that I'm doing. If you were doing like a bigger chop, you would use the same technique and just make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay, ready? And then well, I only need about two tablespoons of this. So we'll just go across a couple times, a little bit more. I love to add this like fine dice right into the dressing because not only does it infuse the flavor, but it creates a great texture when you pour this over the salad. You could also do this with shallots if you don't like a stronger onion flavor. You could do scallions as well. Both give you that same kind of experience, but a little bit milder. Okay, then the salt and pepper. I want you to see, right? So I'm gonna take a good hearty pinch, booyakasha, and then the salt. And I'm even going a little bit more than that. And it looks like a lot, but it's really not. You have to remember, this is gonna be for an entire salad, and we're eating all real, whole, fresh food, which means we're not getting a ton of crazy sodium. Where we get a lot of the sodium when you should be concerned is if you're doing a lot of processed foods, a lot of cans, a lot of frozen food. That's when you need to worry about really overdoing your salt. Otherwise, when you're working, you know, they always say a uh, chef's top secret. The, they, like why we don't get our food to taste as good as they do in the restaurants, which by the way, I do get my food to taste as good, um, is you, they use more salt than you think they would. Okay, so that's our beautiful salad dressing. I'm going to set that aside. If you wanted to, you could even give it like a little squish of uh, Dijon mustard, um, just to add another depth of flavor, but we really don't need it. Ann says, Danny, can you tell me what kind of knife you're using? Um, I would like to purchase one, thank you. Okay, so my two favorite knives that I use all the time, you only need one of these two if you're gonna invest in one knife. This is an eight inch chef's knife. Is it eight inch or 10 inch? Eight inch chef's knife, I think it's eight inch. Um, and this is like a classic knife. If you, you know, if you go to a restaurant or you know, anybody that does a lot of cooking, this is like the one knife you're gonna use 90% of the time. Um, I'm using a brand called Wustoff. 
It's a classic, high end. This knife will cost you about 100 bucks. Um, but I've had this knife for over 10 years. And I used to teach culinary classes. And I used, like, this. people in my class would use this knife. And, like, it will last you a lifetime. So that's that. Then my second favorite knife is, are these Santuco knives? I always say it wrong. Right, so these are those Japanese knives and they have these little divots along the side which helps to push the food off as you're chopping. Now this doesn't have the same, um, when you work with this it's more of an up and down motion where this guy, you're gonna do a little bit more of a rocking motion. Personally, I think for a home cook who does not have like really great knife skills, this is easier to work with, the Santuco. But I think if you're gonna teach yourself one thing in the kitchen, if you're really committed to eating well and cooking more, learn how to use a knife. Take the time to learn it um, because it will literally cut all of your time in the kitchen in half and it makes it so much more enjoyable. Okay, so our dressing is done. Now for the bulk of the show here. I'm gonna get my bowl. No, 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 I'm not. Yes, I am. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. So we need shredded Brussels sprouts and shredded kale. The combination of these two, they come in the same family, so they work really well together, and the colors are beautiful. You basically get like a, a complete rainbow of greens, pale green, dark green, medium greens. It ends up being gorgeous. So I need four cups of each shredded. I did a bunch, I got it started already, because I didn't want to keep you all here all day, but. That's the sweat. This, I'm sorry, so these are the shredded Brussels sprouts, and guys, this time of the year, have you seen these? These are all over the place right, the Brussels sprouts right off the stalk. And when they're fresh, they're almost purple. Can you see that on camera? They're so fresh, the green is so rich, it's almost purple. Aren't green and um, purple like complementary on the color wheel? But it's, yeah. it has like this purple, it just, it's so fresh. If you can get your hands on these, get it. You know, I, I, have, I am not against shortcuts in the kitchen. And a lot of times, like nowadays, you can get the shredded Brussels sprouts already done for you, like salad style, but here's the deal. If you're gonna eat them raw, it's just, it's not gonna make a great salad. I think that stuff is great if you're gonna cook it, but if you're gonna do it raw, you really wanna get fresh Brussels sprouts, cut them yourself. So here's how you shred your Brussels sprouts, okay? You trim off the bottom. Honestly, these barely, these really don't even need to be trimmed because they're so fresh. Usually we trim the bottom off because they're dried out. Slice them in half, and then you just come over your Brussels sprout, and as finely as you can, you chop which creates this shred, okay? Let's do it again. Nadine's sending us a lot of Swift's love. You know what, Nadine? I am sending it right back to you. Thank you. Tamara, hello. Thank you for tuning in. What are you making for Thanksgiving, guys? If you guys are making dishes for Thanksgiving, come down to the comments below and do tell. So you can see, this is very easy to do. And probably in total, you'll use between 15 and 20 Brussels sprouts. Um, the other thing I love about this salad is that, you know, even though um, people have probably seen it, I think not a lot of people do these salads at home. So when you bring them to Thanksgiving or if you do them for a dinner party or something, they're really, you know, they really show you that salads are not boring. They're very, um, like I can't help but think of any other word, but showstopper. They are a showstopper. Okay. That's your new word, showstopper. Showstopper is my new word. I have to make the turkey this year as I'm frightened, Jennifer says. You know what, the turkey is one of the easiest things you can make. You gotta just, I'm gonna send out an email this weekend. Make sure you guys are, go to my website. Make sure you're on my newsletter list. Cause I'm gonna send out an email this weekend sharing some of my favorite, um, Thanksgiving sides, and then I'm also going to share a couple turkey techniques that I've used. They're not mine, they're from other websites um, that I think are pretty much no fail. And really, turkey is one of the hardest things to mess up. Okay, four cups of Brussels sprouts. You're going to get it into a nice big bowl. And please take a minute to notice all of the different shades of green. Huh, so gorgeous. Would you lead up? Okay, next up we have our shredded kale. Hello. Okay, so again, I got it started for you. This kale I have back here is washed already. But what I wanted to show you guys is how I prep it. So I already washed the kale. Whenever you're wor working with kale, easiest way to get that stem out of there, guys, hold the bottom, and then you put your fingers up like this, and I'm gonna pull up and away, and the leaf comes right off. 
it takes couldn't be any easier so much faster than trying to cut it out okay you pull it up and away so you got your kale leaves now for kale and anytime you're making a salad you want to make sure that your greens are dry or your, your dressing will not adhere so this is my favorite tool for ensuring that i get my greens washed i get them cut i mean stemmed then i put them into my salad spinner and all you do is pump Stop it. These got what this salad spinner does, it pulls all the water out to the sides, and then your greens are dry. And it does make a difference when you're making a salad because if the water is on there, I mean, it's still a little, a little wet, but. Okay, so then you roll all up right. your kale. So, so they're okay. My man over here, he's going to make sure that you guys don't miss a thing. Appreciate that, Bing. Okay. So then we roll, roll, roll. Oh, I'm actually going to bring it in half. It's kind of same you would if you were working with basil, like a chiffonade. Roll it like a tight cigar and then thin slices, thin slices. Where do you primarily go for produce? Um, well, when I have farmer's markets, I try to get to the farmer's markets, but primarily I go to Whole Foods. Whole Foods is kind of like my home away from home. I, I don't, I would say I'm in the grocery store almost every day of the week, and I know to some people that sounds like a nightmare, but... To me, it's an absolute dream. I love the grocery store. Okay. Okay. All right. So I have four cups. So you got four of the kale, four of the Brussels sprouts, okay? Let's wipe this off, and then we'll bring it all in. I'm going to grab a towel. Where do you guys buy your produce from? Where do you primarily buy your produce from? That's a good question. I'm curious um, where you guys go. Do you go to the same stores all the time? If so, what are they? Or do you guys have local farmer's markets? And if you do, you gotta tell me where you are for that. Okay, I'm gonna add this in. So we've got the beautiful colors happening. Then what I like to do is just mix it together a little bit, just so we can see them all come together. We are gonna mix this with our dressing. Okay, so you have that and that. So next, what's going into the salad is a quarter cup of chopped and roasted pecans. Now I bought these already chopped and roasted, so that was very easy on my part. But if they're not, you can do it yourself. And it doesn't have to be pecans, although I do love the pecans with the cheese that I'm using. So you sprinkle over this top. Then um, I'm gonna do the cheese last. So you know what, let's do the salad dressing. I'm gonna show you guys how you do this, okay? So before the dressing goes over, I'm gonna give it another little whisk. Make sure it's all mixed. And then just gently drizzle it back and forth. And then we'll toss this with a pair of Tongs, I'm thinking, will be the best way to do it. Um, Jennifer jumps around. She hasn't found the place. I've not found the place either. I mean, even though I do the the most of my shopping at Whole Foods, I I love Trader Joe's. I love the farmers markets. Um, I love any new little market that pops up. Another great place is if you guys can find like ethnic mar markets. A lot of times you can find like fruits and vegetables that aren't available at the regular grocery stores or different spices. And I think that's really key to when you're trying to eat better, but not sacrifice any flavor because what's the point of eating better if you don't enjoy your food, right? So um, it's just kind of keeping an open mind and trying new things. Okay, so I want to now, I'm gonna sprinkle in a third of a cup of Pecorino Romano cheese. This is grated, but if you didn't have grated, you could like finely shred some right over the top. I actually would prefer that, but this is what I have. So I'm gonna sprinkle it in. This adds a really nutty, creamy flavor. You can see this is very holiday because you have the nuts and the cheese and then these winter greens. And, and my friends, we are not done yet because the finishing touch to the salad. Oh, yeah, don't, don't go anywhere yet. Don't you go anywhere yet because the finishing touch to the salad is dun, 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 dun. bacon. Remember that commercial? Bacon, bacon. Okay. So dog food. It was for dog food, but it, <laughs> I remember it. Bacon. Okay, so six pieces of bacon. Let's chat bacon for just a minute. This is real, whole, regular bacon. I buy or I try to buy organic, nitrate-free um, bacon. So that's what I look for. Um, 
If you don't do regular bacon, you can of course do turkey bacon. That's totally fine too. Um, and if you are vegetarian and you don't wanna do the meat at all, then what you wanna do is chop up some green olives. So if you don't do meat, you're gonna swap green olives for the bacon because at the end of the day, they're both adding the same contextual um, flavor, which is basically fatty, salty deliciousness, okay? So that's what this come brings in, but we do eat bacon. So you wanna cook it, oh, let's talk about the bacon pan. So this is, I cooked it in the microwave. I just, it's the easiest way to cook it. And I like that it pulls all the extra fat to the bottom. The paper towel I had on top absorbs all the other extra fat. I mean, it's practically like eating broccoli, right? I mean, all the fat falls to the bottom. The paper towel, we're just left with like, you know, the healthiest part of the bacon. So, um, I put six pieces in the microwave for four minutes. Every microwave will vary. We have Rick. Good morning. Much love from Miami. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining in. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is this. Sprinkle your bacon over the top. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it like that. I'm gonna put this on my serving platter because I want the bacon, when you serve it, you want the bacon on top so people can see it. It's like beautiful finisher, okay? So I have this bowl over here. Um, <clears throat> so let's transfer this salad. Hello, beautiful. I can't wait to eat lunch today. Oh my gosh. I mean, doesn't that look like it's gorgeous? Gorgeous. All the different shades of green is what gets me. Who knew green could be so many different colors? Okay. And I feel like this is the thing for me for all my people out there trying to eat better. I feel like the key is to make food that tastes so good that it's not even about if you're eating healthy food or not. You're just eating delicious food, right? That is the name of the game in my book. Okay, that's enough. Save that for the chef who's snack. And isn't that gorgeous, Allison? I totally agree. Janice, beautiful salad. What about adding pomegranate seeds? What about it? That would be amazing. Okay, you know what else would be amazing? Like chopped apple, chopped pear. You can make any of them work. That's gonna add a sweetness where I'm kind of going salty, savory, fatty here, right? But these are all natural, real, whole food fats. You know, even, even the, the fat and bacon, guys, it's, 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 it's not added, it is not, what's the word? Affected in any way, right? It's like, this is the way nature made it in that animal. And as long as you're buying a high quality meat, then you don't have to sweat it too much. Okay, look at that, come on now. I guess I could have stopped at four pieces of the bacon, but tis the season, one stop there. <laughs> okay, guys, come on. I gotta take a picture of this before I eat it for lunch. Okay, so this is the final product. Janina says, beautiful salad. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I read that comment already. Yes, I'm with you, Janina. Jan uh, <clears throat> Grabbing a fork. I want to test it to tell you what I experience. Okay, so I'm gonna get in there and make sure I get a little bit of everything. And two, with the nuts, like mine were really finely chopped. If you like more of a bite, you could use a bigger nut. You could do almonds, you could do walnuts. They would all work. Okay. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. She takes big bites. It's like prayer. It's like a moment of prayer. Like, a, like mm, OMG. You know, I'm, okay, so many things I want to say about it. The smoky, crunchy bacon. Then you have that nutty, creamy cheese. And then there's this brightness from the lemon with these little crunches from the nuts. And then, of course, the fresh greens. This is salad heaven right here, my friend. You have got to try this one. Bring it along for Thanksgiving. And if you don't want to do it for Thanksgiving, just do it for Tuesday night. It really is delicious. It would be great with soup, um, maybe a little piece of sourdough bread, anything of that nature. So I am going to pick up my phone real quick, see what's going on in the comments here. Can you do a, a Thanksgiving meal special? Um, like someone might be able to cook or remake with their family, etc. Dan, that is an awesome idea, and um, I would love to, but honestly, I'm not gonna pull that off this year, but it's something to think about for next year. What I am gonna do is send out an email with some of my favorite side dishes and a couple go-to um, no-fail turkey recipes, 
um, for anybody that's looking to put a meal together. So if you're not signed up already, guys, go to cleananddelicious.com. Make sure you are subscribed because that's you get like an email from me once a week or so. And I'm going to send one out this weekend about all the Thanksgiving stuff, okay? So check that out. Um, Allison said we're making her hungry. <laughs> Dried cranberries would be great. And I personally, I love the um, dried cherries as well. Does any adding lemon work in saving a dish in the fridge? Like if you put lemon on it, would it be able to keep it for a few days? Um, I don't, if you're talking about greens or salad, um, I think once you start to dress anything, it's not gonna last as long. The best way to get your greens to last is to um, leave them the way they are. And like when I do my grocery shopping, I like to do my food prep. So I wash and prep everything, but then you line your airtight containers with paper towels so they absorb any extra moisture because that moisture is gonna be something that would make them go bad faster. So no, lemon would not help preserve it per se. I would say add the dressings when you're ready to eat. And actually cook it. What be? Might cook it. Oh right, like a ceviche kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know for greens, uh, but I know what you're saying. Okay, my friends, that's what I've got for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will, um, this recipe, I need to put it in to, I, it's not even on my website yet, so I need to type it up and put it up so that I can share it with you guys. So I'm gonna try to get that done today and or slash tomorrow. And uh, look for that Thanksgiving email. I also have a new soup recipe that's going up today. It's a kabocha, uh, Thai red curry kabocha squash soup. So we got a lot of deliciousness happening here, guys, and I can't wait to share it with you. I will talk to you soon. Mwah! Thank you for tuning in. Bye.